Welcome to The Great Showdown Story. We're here to learn a little bit about this insanity and awesomeness, how it started, how we got here. And we're gonna do a little presentation, and then afterwards, I'll start Q&A. If you have questions, we'll go to you. And, uh, and then afterwards, if you wanna hang out, swap some prints, sell some prints, whatever you wanna do, we can do that too. Oh, I'm Jermaine Lucier, by the way, from <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> but I'm not important. What's important is the man we came here to see, Scott Campbell. <laughs> Everybody. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm really happy to see all of you. We're gonna talk about great showdowns. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about uh, the beginning and the um, not end because we're gonna keep going. But I'm gonna start at the beginning for me. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about how I got to start doing these and my interest that led me to make these things. And we'll start at the very beginning when I was always into drawing myself. <laughs> but I think we all were drawing ourselves because that was a very common assignment in school. Draw a portrait, get to know yourself. I got really into it. I love drawing myself. It's great. And I got really into drawing people, which we all do. Um, but I'm also into battles. I was really into battles and showing down between forces. And so this is my first book in, I think it's first or second grade, it was the Young Authors Fair. And it was just this kid just doing a lot of battles. <laughs> <laughs> I drew a lot of battles when I was little. But also, I was always interested in pop culture, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. I love Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Who here loves Spider-Man? I love Superman. Woo! I love Batman. Woo! I love Incredible Hulk. Yeah. In fact, when I first had to decide in kindergarten my favorite color, I'd never, I, the packet about yourself, like I had, I never chose a favorite of anything. I didn't know how to do it. So I was like, I had to choose a favorite color. I was like, oh. So I laid my Spider-Man action figure in my, Incredible Hulk action figure. I was like, it's got to be one of these colors. <laughs> and I picked green. Because <laughs> of Hulk. And I'm also into collecting. These are the things I collect. Star Wars cards and garbage pail kids still have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I love collecting. So that's a big part of my background, too. But when I went to art school, my intentions in art school was to, I wanted to be a comic book artist, a penciler specifically. I didn't want to ink anything. I didn't want to learn colors. I just wanted to draw X-Men. That was the job I wanted. <laughs> so that's what I studied in school. And I was really into drawing people and humans, and like I was, that's kind of what I wanted to perfect, how to draw the human body. That was my focus. And then it shifted somewhere near the end of college. I was more interested in picture books and also just exposed to other kind of artists and other ways of breaking down and simplifying that I started um, wanting to figure out how to simplify the shapes of the faces and the bodies and things. So, and my medium in school was uh, oils. And then after school, everyone I knew was using gouache. So I was using gouache, but I didn't like it. I was struggling with it. I was having a real hard time finding my medium. But I was also in, still into redraw. This is from the Hieronymus gouache. I was into a bunch of paintings just ripping off him, but just making them kind of fun characters and stuff. But I was kind of struggling with the medium, and I wasn't having fun with it. And then um, I saw this show by Michel de Sama, this, uh, illustrator that paints very simple, peaceful paintings with sub subdued color palettes. And it was my first time kind of really exploring watercolors. And I was like, this is my jam. Because it's non-committal. You can start soft, and then you can raise up the values if you want to. And it felt old timey, and I liked drawing. So that's why I started drawing on the colored paper and kind of making the lines old janky, because it feels like an old illustration, you know? And this was my first, like, this was my first painting for an actual art show in an art gallery. And this was 1988. The second I made pitch show, because my friend Nathan Safety was invited for the first one. So that's when I first met Katie. And I remember when I first met Katie, I was like, oh my God, she has a gallery. <laughs> it's crazy. I was like so starstruck. And so I was invited. This is my first art show I was invited to. And it was, it was uh, based on video games. And so this was Paperboy, one of my favorite games from 1984. Um, so I made it. 1884. So the second anime fit, I was going to do Pac-Man. And I decided that I, um, I was getting really frustrated. I was making all these gags. I was going to do a big painting with all these gags. And then I decided, you know what? What if I break them up into a bunch of small little gags? You know. So this was the first time that I wanted to do bite-sized paintings, like cheap little bite-sized things that people could collect. You know, And I didn't have to commit to any of these jokes. None of them had to be wonderful because there are other jokes there, you know? So I found comfort in that and just like it just riff and riff and riff. So 
This was my first time doing like these kind of small paintings. And really they're showing down also already. So the first um, Crazy for Cult show was the first time that I was like, okay, we'll do my first time doing movies and revisiting my favorite cult movies. So I had in mind for the kind of these small painting ideas. So I wanted to make little bite-sized little showdowns. Well, it wasn't showdowns at that time. It was just people standing around having a good time together. But then, <laughs> but then they were kind of showing down, you know? So, so I started thinking of names. So I was like, awesome showdowns, sweet showdowns. I was like, what am I gonna call them? And then we just settled on great showdowns. And these were the first 10. And they really started with this one right here. It was the first kind of one. But these are all kind of my, some of my favorite movies that I take comfort in, that I would watch when I'm sick. Um, these were my faves. And so the, the monolith, there's no face on there. I didn't do faces yet on the <laughs> animate object. Um, in the second show, I did the, they asked me to do the poster for it, so it was a cult tree. So I was able to, once again, riff on even more movies and just put them all just standing around in this tree. And some of those I pulled out to be the next 10 showdowns. So these were the next 10 showdowns. And again, no face on that little taxi driver mirror. <laughs> Haven't gotten into it yet. But the third Crazy for Cult show, I started putting some faces on there. <laughs> All the objects started joining, joining the party and everyone started having a good time together. <laughs> so it was around that time that I was like, oh man, I want to keep doing these like outside of these Crazy for Cult shows and I want to maybe assemble a book and stuff, you know? So I had just recently got a literary agent to help me do picture books. And she said like, hey, you got to like maybe do a website and have like a regular kind of schedule where you could start making these. So I started a website and five days a week I would post a new one and it kind of took the pressure off and it helped me kind of, I was able to generate them in a nice peaceful way and it would keep me on schedule. So then I started building a bunch and then we started doing a couple books. <laughs> then we did some uh, art shows. <laughs> hey, hey, we did some of our friends. Uh, and then we did some toys and so we, it's, it's grown from there. But what is a great show now? <laughs> it's the basic, right? Two people standing in a dusty street. They're going to draw their weapon. That's what we know. And sometimes you have different weapons that end differently. That's an obvious kind of one. This is, he kind of, Raiders, he did his own kind of ending to that one. <laughs> and then other showdowns, it's just the ending battle that's memorable, like when he's fighting Predator. But really, when he takes off that mask, is when I was like, oh, that's pretty great moment, so I kind of incorporate the mask thing. Or even like the priest versus the child in the exorcist, right? And like they were, that's also a, a memorable, kind of a long showdown. There's not one moment, so. But then, the romantic moments, you guys. So there's those showdowns of, you're talking about your, your lover that you haven't seen in a long time, and it's raining. That's, an, that's also a showdown, right? And, or in Ghost, when they're having the romantic time, but it's not them showing down, that little clay pot is having a great time. <laughs> so it really got involved. And then that's when I started like thinking, like, okay, I just love these little happy like things, you know? Yeah. So like Die Hard, it makes sense that he would be versus, uh, what's his name? All right, right? It seems like that would make sense. But that was the scene for me that was like, damn, that was great. And also, you know, Spinal Tap, that was my favorite scene in that. It was, it was just that surprise of the small, um, Stonehenge. And this could have been Keanu Reeves versus Patrick Swayze, but really, there is a big wave coming. That's, <laughs> that's really the showdown. Like, what, what are they gonna, how are they going to deal with that? And you know, <laughs> this could have been him with his, with his gun versus everybody, but that big pile of the white powder that he stuffed his face <laughs> into, bonkers. Put a little face on that. Another moment, you guys, as a kid, blew me away. Trying to get lukewarm, slice open his little friend and the guts come out and you stuff him in there and it's smelly, like that was insane as a kid. So that's where you put the hat smiley face. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bunch of things, like I can't put happy faces on all the bees, it's just a cloud of bees. <laughs> he's okay with it so far, but he's probably gonna be just tickled by the bees. What do you do if you're an astronaut and it's you're in space and it's just space? Just put a smiley face on space. <laughs> And some of the showdowns are just moments for me that were important. Like for ET, um, the speak and spell, I had to speak and spell with the module and you, you learn the letters like, oh, this is the word, like when Elliot did this. It's like, it was kind of like, it would get you pumped on doing the word because it has to do with ET a little bit. 
So I loved my speaker spell and him trying to kind of communicate with home. That was an important moment, I thought. So this was the way it shows for this one. But I did do some more ETs later. This could have been, he could have been versus the sheriff, or she's sheriff. Yeah. But really, this was the moment that was bonkers, right? When he's stuffing the person in there. Put a face on there. Vertigo. I don't remember a lot of the other characters in Vertigo, but I, I do remember that poster. I loved it. And, and really, he's versus the Vertigo, his own Vertigo, most of the time. So I was like, yes, yeah, make him versus that Vertigo itself. I just love this scene. <laughs> but again, they were having their battle, but this is the thing that brought them down, right? <laughs> Zealander, right? You guys know? So in Roadwire, I did a few Roadwires, and I saw this as a, as a young child, and this was the part that blew me away when I was watching with my parents when the little guy has his boomerang and he throws it and he chops people up, and this guy decides he's gonna try to catch it, but it slices off all his fingers, and there's a shot of the sky with his fingers flying up into the sky, and as a kid I was like, <laughs> I mean like, like Frodo losing his finger in that cartoon also blew me away, losing appendages really struck me as a kid, so. <laughs> and this was the scene I chose from Conan the Barbarian because when he's walking down the street, he just accidentally runs into a camel and just punches the camel. <laughs> Which is so stupid. But then later I did do him versus the guy that you would expect. I've done some TVs. When I finally got around to RRR, <laughs> this was the scene that I knew the most because I saw it all over the internet, but it took me a while to get around to watching it. But when I finally watched it, I was like, there's just too many to do. <laughs> I got to do a lot of these ones. Like, there's a lot of the classics that there are so, mem so many memorable moments that I just want to kind of keep doing them from those movies. And they're endless. And when I assembled these, I think these are the only Jurassic Parks that I've done, maybe, which seems crazy. I should do some more of those. By the way, this was, you know, Ali Moss? The, yeah. the, uh, yeah. This was his idea. He, did <laughs> he really liked that scene in particular. I've done a lot of uh, Indiana Jones, of the Raiders Lost Ark ones, and Star Wars, of course, I think that's the most that I've done of showdowns, but I get this question a lot. Do you watch all these movies? Mm. I don't watch every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes there's a movie that I just remember the poster. For example, like Free Willy, it's like I remember that song. I, I think I saw that video a lot more than I, I, anything else, the music video. and. I saw, I just love this scene, but I did skim it just to make sure this was a legit scene to do. <laughs> I skimmed it, but I didn't watch it. But yeah, I gotta do that. Also, I haven't seen Mac and Me. Oh. I have to confess. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I need to watch it, but there's a lot I can get to. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Paul Rudd's joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's so so I have to do it. Uh, Paul Rudd when he's on Conan O'Brien yeah. and he brings his clip. It's his clip. <laughs> Um, and some of the showdowns have a lot of characters in it. Fury Road is one of my favorite movies, and it was fun just to draw a bunch of the characters together, you know? And this was probably the most epic one that I've ever done, because this is the most epic battle that I've ever seen. I mean, obviously there's some big ones in Lord of the Rings, but, I mean, that's nuts, so. And these are some of my favorite to do. They're just my favorite ones to do because it's like putting together a puzzle. You know, I could just draw all the characters and I piece them together and I love imagining them being on, in the scene together, like where they would be, who I would want to be. And part of that comes from there's this one puzzle that I used to do all the time when I was a kid. And I think about it almost every day. That was this puzzle. <laughs> this Marvel superheroes. Because I would do this all the time you know, just every piece had a different head on it. And I would think about, oh, I don't want to be someone on the outside because it's cold out there. And I want to be one of these guys. Like, oh, this look, that guy looks like a bummer. I don't want to be near that bummer guy, but this looks like fun people to be around. Like, maybe this, like, like, this looks like maybe a tough time. So I just think about this a lot. And it's a huge inspiration for the busy scenes for me. This, I have to say, it was probably the, one of the biggest hits. <laughs> and this was also a tough one. I have to say, my friend Travis Teft, helped me figure this one out. He was the one that came up with the concept for this because I was struggling and he had reached out to me about it a long time ago about doing one for it and I finally saw it and I loved it and I saw it to Miss Americana and the whole scene around it and the community around it got me so excited and I talked to him about it and this was, he helped me figure this concept out. I love her and I love Travis. I gotta talk about my wife, you guys. <laughs> so Megan Roddy huge influence on me because she's the most wonderful person on the planet. 
And she's introduced me to a lot of movies that I have not previously grown up with, I've never seen, mainly a lot of rom-coms. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, okay, we got to take, I'm gonna take you on a tour of all the most important rom-coms. And as we watch it, she calls out the certain scenes, the important scenes, you know, the ones that stick with all of you. So when we're going through these, these are the times that she would be like, oh dude, this is done. All these things are things that I didn't know uh, previously about, but she was able to call them out for me, and that's what makes it really enjoyable to do these sorts of ones too. And so it's a more well-rounded, you gotta watch everything, you guys. You really need to have everything. You can't just watch those action movies. <laughs> or the obscure ones. Okay, how do we draw these famous folks? So my process is this. I gather a lot of reference, so I just get t as much as I can just from Google shirts, and then I just, just doodle, just do a lot of doodles, and you know, some of these things I'll start piecing together in Photoshop, and then kind of like Frankenstein, Frankenstein the ones that work, and then move little things around to try to figure out how to simplify with just a few lines to try to get that character, you know? Because some of these things, like this one looks pretty good. Well, actually that one looks, but putting them together, you can kind of maybe figure it out. And some of them work and some of them don't. And then you get to the final one. Um, love drawing these two guys, but sometimes it's very difficult when it's someone so recognizable to try to figure out, like, Paul Giamatti was really difficult for me. And I don't even think it was incredibly successful. But also, like, I was so pumped on this one drawing of this guy. One, one part that always stresses me out with the drawing part is, like, I get very nervous when I get to that head. I might lose that likeness that I got just very easily with the drawing. And sometimes I do lose it, and it's okay. But I still love that guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Batman. Love drawing these guys. So I drew these many, many times. So I have a lot of different versions of these guys. And that guy especially is so fun to draw, Penguin. Um, piece them together, and that's how it works. Everything ever all at once, again, I was just trying to draw many, many. I had wanted to draw every single version of them throughout the universes, multiverses, I guess you would call them. Mm -hmm. And when you piece these together, like I, some of them I would get, when I get to a point where I get my favorite head, then I'll start copying pasting that head so I can kind of maybe keep them sort of consistent. But some of them are kind of different heads, but anyways, then that's, that's how that one turned out. All right, let's see if this works. So yesterday I painted a grave of fireflies for my friend Alex who won the sweepstakes. I don't know if that's what it's called, <laughs> but um, which was wonderful. So this is how it goes. And I, I cut out a lot, unfortunately, because my Twitch didn't work. But so I do a lot of sketches of these guys, sketch them out, sketch them out. So I scan them all in, and then I start piecing them together, cut them out and piece them in together, piling them up, and then uh, start moving them around. And uh, this is where I get to choose my favorite ones of all of them. You can't really see it very well, but I'm tracing a guy right there. And that's how you, uh, you kind of choose your favorites. This is kind of a recent thing, tra tracing it, like, um, because there's times I just, like this, I just use the drawing that I use, and then um, when you trace it, it really is hard to see, so sometimes I kind of have a hard time with that, but. Get that cave in there. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this movie, but uh, once again, very sad, but they find this cave uh, during World War II, and uh, they're homeless from firebombing, and so they, they find this, this cave that they're gonna live in for a while, so with fireflies in it. So I print it out, Trace it. I don't want you to copy my work, but also <laughs> I'm keeping the light out of it. So I always start with the skin for some reason and the shade on the ground. And now we're gonna jump to the end. Get ready, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's how you do it. <laughs> Add a little face at the end. Okay, there you go. That's it. And this nice. is what it turned out to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's right back there. Do you have it yet? Uh, yeah. There it is, everybody in person. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Okay, guys, really quick, let's talk about the evolution of the style. Obviously, oh, well, I, let's just go to that. I focus on his face. This is some, the Murrays, right? The Murrays, yeah. Obviously, started, didn't really look anything like Bill Murray. Right? <laughs> and then I slowly, as I started committing to this project, I really started getting into the likeness and trying to figure out like the shapes that work, like the shape of his hair and his head is very important, how his eyes are and his face, get his, you know, like not get bunched up there. So that carried through. That's not the strongest Murray over there, but um, this is the evolution of, of Murray. Let's do an evolution of, of Arnold. Yeah. Also very simple, 
little trapezoid, and then kind of, you know, a variety of successes and not as successful. But when you get to the end, I think these are working pretty good. I'm surprised that uh, that's the only time I did the gap tooth, though, because that's like <laughs> such a defining part of them. Harrison's, probably the simplest in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't even put a nose on this poor guy. Um, but then this guy was very important to me as I started drawing, because I don't know if you saw at the show, but my dad is here. Mm -hmm. And he looks, I've noticed there's a lot of similarities. He doesn't look exactly like Harrison Ford. My mom definitely disagrees, but my, <laughs> I think there's a lot of similarities. So especially when I get to these last ones, it simplified kind of the shape, boxy shape of his head. Like very much my dad. Sigourney Weaver starts very small because she's in that thing. She has a pretty boxy head as well. Oh, it's another Harrison right there too. Let's close up on these. Hi Sigourney. Okay, some special case showdowns. So there have been times that I have done showdowns for certain filmmakers and celebrities and stuff that have kind of been interested in their movies and also just kind of other things. So um, Patton Oswalt, he collected a lot of the horror showdowns. Those are the ones that you would collect. So he commissioned me to do um, some showdowns for his ex-wife, Christine, who I don't know if you know about this, her story, how she had a crime blog because she's obsessed with unsolved crimes and criminals. And she's very obsessed with uh, Golden State Killer. And she, she coined the phrase Golden State Killer. She, she was writing a book and she passed away before the book was done and then he finished the book. And then there's a documentary series, I think on HBO, incredible, great. But they found, they caught him because of the stuff that she kind of threw out there, so. Anyways, he commissioned her favorite three unsolved mysteries, Zodiac Killer, D.B. Cooper, and um, Bill Stay Killer. I think that was strangely some of the things from him, but, and it's in the documentary, you guys, mm -hmm. these paintings, by the way. Paul Shear, I did something for his NTSF UV show, right? Um, and we had a relationship after that. I've done some How This Get Made. He did a forward for my book, Mad Libs Forward, that was wonderful, and some J.J. Abrams. You know these two, right? These are important people in the history of 1988. This is uh, Jensen Heath. Neil Patrick Harris um, was an early collector, and I, he was the first forward. I asked him if he wanted, could do a forward for my first book. So his fa I said, I'll paint your favorite showdown. And it was Clue. That was his favorite showdown. And then after that, we had a relationship where I would be his gift guy. So when he was at, uh, he did, he was Hedgewig, Hedgewig in injury um, on Broadway. So at the closing, he wanted the big prints for everybody in the cast. Also, how I met your mother. There was something I did for him on that as well. Um, Edgar Wright also was a collector, so I did some some of these things for him, and he did the forward for the book as well. Not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Huge deal because of Jordan introduced us. What about those toys? Almost done, guys. <laughs> toys, you guys. It's kind of a weird thing, but always something I've always wanted my whole life is to make toys. These you can't play with. They're not posable at all, and they're only like 100, 150 of them at a time, and they're hand painted, so they're very special. I did them with DKE Toys for Dove Clemmer, if you know him. Um, and uh, it's been, it was uh, George Gasper who used to model each one in the beginning, hand by hand. Um, and I would do these, uh, these orthographic views, which to me, I worked in video games for many years as a concept artist, so I designed a lot of characters, and so I learned how to do turnarounds for that and also figuring out how to call out certain things like wonkiness right like always in the games that i design the wonkiness is very important so i have to make sure that i call those out so we do a lot of drawovers and stuff and a lot of passes eventually dave bondy started modeling them in 3d and then we just do a lot of back and forth and i do a lot of notes on things to wonky wonk up you know? <laughs> Alyssa paints paints them all by hand and we uh and this is kind of how we do the toys some of them were big. Last time we had some big ones, which were tough to do, so we, I haven't done any more after that. This is how big they are. <laughs> and he's standing next to them. So I love doing the showdowns, and I will do these showdowns as long as you guys are into them, because it's very fun for me. And also I love painting you, and I love doing portraits whenever I can. I like to get to them once a year, so um, sometimes it's every two years or three years, but um, it's fun for me to also experience you guys in the same kind of way you know, and doing these hunts. There will be more here, by the way. <laughs> more in LA, guys. But I really love um, doing this with you guys, and I love that you, I love seeing the movies that resonate with certain people. Every movie seems to resonate with someone, and it's just wonderful for me to watch, and I thank you guys so much for being a part of it, and I love all of you. Thanks for coming, and that's it. <laughs>
see everybody. That was awesome. I didn't know that. The first thing is this was so much fun. The uh, how much did you have to like look back to remember this stuff? You know, like the evolution of it. Because it's not something you it's something that just happens. You know, yeah. but to put together a presentation about it, how did you? What was it like putting this in? Um, I love looking back in the history of things and going through the old showdowns. It was just fun just to sift through them and, and remember kind of like, oh, this is a kind of weird one or this is weird one. Like, um, and then even seeing when the files were made, because all of my files are numbered, so I know how many. There's like a thousand something or whatever. But like, it's, it's fun for me to look back and experience, because uh, when I see those, I know what I was going through in my life. So it's fun. like every showdown reminds me of a certain time, just like every movie reminds me of a certain time in my life. Every showdown for me kind of is like I was at a certain point, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I love seeing the evolution of it with the characters and stuff. When do you know that you've leveled up? When, do you, when are you like, oh, wow, I'm getting better? Like, is there, is it just, is, how does that happen? And when do you know? Like, is there a specific moment? Um, I'm get, um, I think it's like, I mean, that's a long thing. It's like the whole thing of also, like, I get the question of style, like, how do you find your style? Yeah. There's a big question I get from artists a lot, or just people. And that's something that you kind of just have to relax and enjoy. Sorry, you guys, this is distracting. No, 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 it's fine. I'm trying to do this without We're talking about hey. nostalgia. We're talking about nostalgia and we're getting the whole... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I feel like every little success, every little time that I do get a likeness that kicks, I'm just like, oh! And lots of times it's like in the drawing phase, and then I get, like, again, worried that I'm just not going to transfer over. But there's just been many little successes Oh man, I wish I could look at some of the old ones to see like when, uh, because the likeness really started kicking in, I think by the like the third show or the fourth show, like they, they really weren't kicking in, but I feel like the successes are kind of ongoing. Okay. So I think I would always kind of be excited about that, you know. Yeah. The process too, obviously technology improves, all these things, and now I think probably a lot of people are surprised maybe, I know I was when I found out that you, you, know, you go from you know, hand sketch, into the computer, back out, and then you do it again. So like, how did that kind of happen? Was it, it wasn't always like that, I assume. Well, you know what, I think that also comes from video games because I would sketch a lot and then kind of piece things together in Photoshop for that and then paint a lot in Photoshop for, for concept art. So I got really used to composing like that. Like, um, there were some, some of the early paintings where I would try to just draw everything on the, on the actual, like I think the Paperboy one, like I tried to, make sure I drew everyone and erased it and, and into the actual scene and stuff. But um, it's easier when you can just, I've just gotten very used to being able to erase everything very easily and right. move stuff around, piece things together. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. However it works, it. obviously incredible. Um, one thing you didn't get into in this is um, the relationship with Gallery 1988. We got how you started, but mm. what was it like when they were like, let's do a show of these and now we're at the fifth one. What was that like? Ooh, boy. It felt great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it felt good because. Or how I, did it happen? Like, was the, did Katie approach you? Did you approach her? Yeah, I mean, we. I, I don't really remember how we did it. We just we were always showing together. I would show in all the group shows, and then we would actually have smaller shows together. Like we'd have groups of, like Nathan Stapley and I had a show together, a monster show, and like we would do smaller group shows. So I think it just got to the point where it just made sense. There's so many of them just sitting around. Yeah. Let's just put them all on the wall together. I think it was just a natural chat to try to figure that out. And I remember the first show that I was like, I was, it was incredible happiness to be surrounded by, by everything. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think we all know that we're in that happiness right now, obviously, yeah. which is like so good. Jordan, because I'll say one other yeah. thing. This is how I always meant for them to be experienced. You know, yeah. like, like the Crazy for Cold shows, I liked seeing them in groups of nine, groups of 10. Like, so that you can see them together as a family, you know, like on, on like uh, on the website, it's always one at a time, but you also can see them as a family. So seeing them like this, this is always how I intended it to be. Like you're experiencing the family of film together. What was your feeling going into the show? Like, you know, the show? Nights, yeah, it, were you, obviously you obviously have a fan base, we're waiting outside, you know, you're going to, you know, sell stuff, but are you anxious? Are you worried? What is it, what is that like? Are you going into something like this? Well, I think there's always, I mean, there's always like that, um, I get to get worried that, uh, that people won't be, you know, like there'd only be a certain diehard excited people, but then like maybe, you know, some of the popularity would wane, you know? I just want everyone to be happy, but I uh, just get very excited to see everyone and see everyone outside and it just makes, it's like the most, like I remember talking to my old boss, Tim Schaefer about it, like going to like somewhere where you sign books for people 
or go to a convention or something like that, you should have to pay for that experience. Like, I should have to pay to have people come and just <laughs> love this stuff, you know, because it's like, it feeds me so much, you know? It's like, it just makes you very emotional. As a, an art collector myself, what I, I obviously love the style and the ideas, but what I think I love about the shows is that 90% of the show, I can, in my mind, know what I kind of coming in here to, to buy, you know? I'm like, mm -hmm. but then, then there are that wall back there, the mystery yeah. wall, yeah, the mystery. which puts everything in disarray. I know I <laughs> personally bought two off that wall and I was very excited to see. How do you decide what you keep a mystery print for the show? And how do you decide what just gets, who gets posted on Instagram and everything else and revealed beforehand? Well, I mean, really it's just trying to jam as much as I can out before the show or at the end of the show. But the mystery ones, I want to have a nice diversity mm -hmm. for what those choices are. I want some that are like everyone would recognize, some really obscure ones. So as many types of movies are represented in that group. Okay. So that's the important thing for the mystery ones for me. And I just like, you know, some surprises, you know, there has to be something that people can yeah. it's <laughs> surprise inside. No. Cause I, I think about that too. It's like, oh man, are people really gonna be excited? They've already seen all these things, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, is it a good know. balance? It's a good balance, I'll tell you, it's a good okay. balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Um, last thing and I'll open it up is, we always were wondering as a fan, the list of movies you have that you haven't gotten to. Oh boy. How long is it? Where do you keep it? What is it like? And <laughs> well, at what point are you like, oh, I want to go back to Jurassic Park. Or like we were talking about randomly, like old school. I was like, he, they did one thing there, but you, the, you know, I was like, so like yeah, how I do know. you figure out when you're going to go back? And tell me about like, you well, know, what, what, what do you, how do you decide what the next thing you're going to paint is? It's kind of. Well, I, I, I regularly go through my list. I have had the same Word doc since 2010 or something like that, or 11, that I just have to keep adding to and try to pull things out. And there are certain times that people would send me a list of ones that they want and then I, copy and paste that in there so that's kind of sporadically and there was a time that I was doing themes and so there's a whole section of just week theme weeks um, that I was doing for a while but then I stopped doing a five a week because yeah. just life is life, stressful yeah. and then some of them are color coded I go through and I was like okay I'm gonna make all I'm gonna make all the pink ones like I have to get to these as soon as possible and then the purple ones like second tier and I, I go through the whole thing fairly regularly to kind of do that and I just every time I open the doc there's a few at the top that I'm like okay those are always going to be the top. <laughs> and do you, do, you, do, do you watch them like on your computer? Do you have them on the TV in the background? Obviously, I'm sure they're all... Oh, when I watch them? You focus in on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, well, yeah, because I think a lot of the problem is like a lot of the ones on the list are either ones that I haven't seen or movies that I've seen a long time ago and I have to re-watch them. Yeah. So it just takes a lot of time when there's all these new movies to watch too. Oh, and TV show. Which I should probably do some more TV well, that shows. Was, that's on my list. I was going to figure somebody else was going to ask about it. We have Doctor Who, we have Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. But then, and we, this, I should do I, more one shows. of the first things too was also Lost was another big I Lost, one. right. Lost. I have one, one, one guy, Dharma Dan, always asking me about Lost. <laughs> He's a big Lost guy. So I, I would, I mean, I don't know, Lost. You guys thinking about that anymore? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is the yeah, anniversary this year. Oh yeah, he reminded me. That was one this of the, is first, the anniversary. That was one of your... Yeah, I forget what the show that was for, but I did the like lost, twenty of them. Show. Oh, it was last year. There you go. <laughs> that was when last was a big deal. Yeah, I think I did twenty for that show or something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the height of my excitement about it. But there are a lot of shows I would like to do. So um, yeah, I should do some more of those too. Hard, hard enough to watch I'm a okay. two-hour movie instead of a you know. Yeah. It's like do Sopranos. It's like okay, I have like you know. Yeah. Weeks and weeks. Of but there are definitely <laughs> shows that I really want to do. And then like like on the Discord and, and people like will suggest a bunch of stuff and I take a lot of those, I add them to the list or anything. And people will suggest games or like TV shows. There was an 8-bit show that I did, Showdowns of Video Games. Yeah. Showdowns. Yeah. Right. yeah. Anyways, I just should have put that up there. But yeah. I have a few more, but who, uh, who's got a question? Anybody got a question? It's got a So we come into the show and there's a couple that are always pre-sold from the filmmakers, but are there any that you or your family have kept? There's definitely been some, yeah. Friends and family, like there's certain ones, like a lot of the ones that did, weren't, aren't in this show. Like my friend made this movie, um, Wish Dragon. So he got that one. My other friend um, made Map, uh, Map of Tiny Perfect Things. That's also his. And, and uh, what's the other one? Anyway. Yeah, oh, he approached me about that one too. So he got that one, that's right. Exactly, so that's usually, it's, it's like friends that make them, but sometimes it's like they get really, someone's really, it's very special to them. Also Working Girl was, my friend who made Map of Time, that's his favorite movie, so I gave him that one. So you don't have any Scott C. art in Scott C.'s house? 
<laughs> I only have one thing up. I don't like putting my stuff on the wall. Okay. But there's only one thing that Megan wanted to put up when I did the koala. It wasn't a pop culture thing. I don't think she would let me do pop culture. But, um, but it was the koala, it was a koala pool party. And she's like, she's wanted to, when we had our first child, like she wanted to push koala because that was her favorite animal. Yeah. Um, so that's up in her room, but that's it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of all of your work, but I, I would be Thank remiss you. to say that my children are huge fans of the books, the children's books that oh. you, you put out. So, awesome. uh, Thank Hug you. Machine and Sleepy, the Good Time Buddy, like uh, the Nighttime Buddy, uh, we're huge fans of those books. Awesome. Will we be seeing any more oh, children's books? Oh, more children's books. Well, thank you. I'm happy that your kids love my children's books. That, like, I love doing children's books. That's a big part of my life. In fact, that's, I will say um, right now, some of the, like, I'm not able to do as many um, prints and things as I'd like to because I'm working on a graphic novel series for children with Tundra, which is a branch of Penguin Random House. And it was supposed to be done already, but it takes a lot of time. So, because I used to, comics was a big part of my upbringing, obviously, and I did a lot of indie comics and anthologies. So, um, this is, I have the first two books with them that I have to do. And I definitely want to start getting back into picture books, too. So, I just, I just need to find time to come up with some pitches. So, yeah, it's my favorite thing. And working with kids and visiting schools is my favorite. I love it. So, I'll get back to that, too. So, thank you. Yeah. John? Fairly recent fan was uh, oh, through my wife, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I found it really interesting. You pointed out uh, the monolith with no face, and that you evolved to put faces on inanimate objects. I'm mm -hmm. curious how that. Oh, interesting! Like why I put pat faces on stuff. Me? Interesting. Well, because very quickly it seemed like those objects were just as important characters, mm. and um, because all my characters are smiling. Sometimes they probably shouldn't be, because they're pretty sad things. But uh, there are, um, it just seemed like they should be a part of it. And it's just funny to put little happy faces on them. So make them like, uh, in, if in the middle of those scenes, if it was that smiling, you know? Like if he's taxi driver, he's looking at that mirror, and then all of a sudden the face is like, but the, but the face is not like, say anything, just like pleased to be that thing, you know? But uh, yeah, it, it just, they just became just as important as the, people, living people, so I've made, they're all living in a way, so they all have souls. Follow-up question, are there other, from the model that you pointed that out specifically, are there other ones you, you put a face to? Oh, you mean like later? Uh, like the ones that don't have a face now, like yeah. old ones? Yeah. I think those are the only ones, the, the monolith and the, the mirror. But, mm. But hey, I'm just gonna leave those faceless. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add any. You're not George Lucas, you're not going back to change your You're <laughs> not gonna go back to change him. No, but I like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I have a question. I, you release a lot of uh, original art. Uh, I just wanna know, what's your thought process on like, the choosing which prints which, which uh, become prints? Because well, yeah. I'm looking at this Godzilla one, <laughs> and I love that one. I don't have five grand to just drop it. Yeah. So like, at one point I was going to get it. He printed it, so like, I don't yeah. know how easy well, that is. No, I mean, I'm down with making prints. I would love to make it of every single one, but there's just so many. So it's kind of just like, which ones? I kind of go by also the response when I post them. So if something gets a lot of likes or a lot of like interactions, then like those are the ones that seem like should get a print, you know? Or a lot of people are requesting it. So I just have lists from, from that. Um, like this one person really likes McGruber. Is that person here? Constantly wanted me to print the McGruber. Every time I do a, a print thing, you go, McGruber? <laughs> <laughs> so I probably should. So some of these I probably should at some point. It's just like trying to figure out how to fit them in. But if there are ones that you are interested in, I would be down with making that one. Anyone else would be into a print of this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Okay. I'll raise your hands. Just raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there'll at least be an addition of 10. Yeah. So I've got a lot of your showdowns up in my office. A whole bunch of them up there. But I have one living in my living room. It's the Peewee with all the bikes stacked up. Oh, yeah. I look at that often and go, what, what was the process on that one? And why does it exist like that? You know, like, like a bunch of Peewees? Yeah. I forget. Not technically a showdown. Yeah. No, but but it was for crazy. It was for a crazy cult show. Yeah. So in it's in the world. Say it. It was like a Peewee only show. 
That was a Pee Wee Only show. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of themes, you guys. A lot of themes in 1988. Um, Thanks, man. I forget the piece that, like, when I first decided that I loved a bunch of the same character together, you know? Like, a bunch of Pee Wees piled up, or a bunch of Gold Blooms together, or a bunch of, like, I just love seeing, or a bunch of Spider Mans. I think actually. Keanu maybe, was one too. Yeah, a bunch of Keanu's. Like, I think I, I was really into drawing a lot of Spider-Mans. Maybe that was the first, because uh, there were some Marvel shows or something. I just like, I just think it's funny to see a lot of the same characters hanging out with each other. So that's why I was extra excited about Spider-Verse, because of seeing mm -hmm. yeah, right. that many Spider-Mans together. But, I just um, get asked about it so often, and I just feel, I don't know what's better than a pile of Pee-Wees. <laughs> <laughs> if you love Pee-Wees, yeah, why not a pile of them? Uh, John, is that your hand up? Well, I've got some aunts and that were blessed by such a prolific artist. <laughs> but do you know how many great showdowns you have created at this point? And do you have a favorite out of those thousands? Oh, I knew that I would get that. I knew I would get that question. <laughs> I would have to look at my files. <laughs> Very detailed files. Thousand. Um, actually, you would know because it was the, the last one in the master list. That's how many I have. Uh, it's in the 1200. 1,200. 1,200. That makes sense. Like yeah. like a four, three to 500 yeah. per show. And favorite, honestly, like, I mean, I should say like a lot of the new ones, like, because every, there's, there's so many that I actually do get really excited about after I paint them. But really that ghost one has always been one of my favorite ones. Like it just, I just find so much joy in looking at it. And when I made it, it just makes me laugh so much. So <laughs> I did a series of, I did a series called, like, I forget what it's called, but it's a bunch of that scene. I just love that moment. It was a, a bunch of different ghosts with their loved one um, on a clay wheel. Yeah. Uh, like that, that brings up a question I had, which was, you know, we, we went through the story of this and it was so awesome, but there was like, we were talking, there was like a six year break between shows because you kind of gave it up for a while. Like, what oh, happened yeah. there Good and why did, why did you came back? You know what, because I, I think there was a time that I was like, um, I did get burnt out on it. Yeah. And um, I just, yeah, it just wasn't as fun for me and I didn't see not that I didn't see the point of it, but it just was like, it just got really burnt out on it. And I kind of, I forget what got me back into it. I think your life, man, you go through some sure. tough times. Maybe I was having a tough break. time. I need well, a break. The second I was show overwhelmed. Coming, this show isn't coming tomorrow, right? You know what, that's the thing. It's a good lesson for us all. It's okay. Something you're passionate about, it's okay if you're burnt out on it. Just take a break and you come back with, come back with renewed vigor because when I came back, I was committed to it. Because I, in the past, when I was doing like five, five a week, and then I think I started feeling like I was letting everyone down if I would do like two a week, and I was just like, I just, ah, I, just I just didn't know how much everyone's excited about it. And I was like, you know, so it was just kind of, I was questioning everything like we all do, you know, questioning my existence of what's, <laughs> what's important to me, you know. Victoria? Are there any that you've scrapped and never released? Ooh, interesting. Good one. <laughs> Am I, I going to yes? I think that was also something I was going to uh, I thought was gonna be asked. There's just some movies that I'll watch again. And just I just can't figure out what um, what to do. Like or the really really sad ones. Some like you know. Someone actually want that. Yeah, I mean, Great Fireflies, True Neck Red. I like that one. But like, uh, there's other movies that just like I just don't know. It's just like terrible stuff happened in this movie that I just don't really want to do. I'll say okay. Here's what I'll say. Where's the deer? I haven't I haven't gotten past. Jojo Rabbit. I haven't uh, painted yeah. Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. I loved it, but I'm like, do you want to paint Hitler? Yeah, don't paint yeah. Smiling. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. just with a, with a I know there's some rotten stuff. Yeah. 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 But it's a funny. It, I mean, that like I love the movie, but I was also just like, man, like I know what I need to paint, but am I ready to uh, do it? When you paint, you have to think about like you know, if, you know, get paid for these things. How often do you like? Was somebody actually gonna buy this? Does that ever affect your ability to be like, oh, I'm the can't, like, in, in, no, it never, excluding the sad stuff that we just talked no, about. No, it never affects my ability to, my ability to Not paint. Not ability, or, I meant like my, your desire. My desire to paint. No, because that's, the, the thing that has blown me away about all of this is that like, I, it just, the most obscure like movie that like, that I'll, I'll do that like, I, I don't think I've heard anyone talk about it. There's always someone that's like their favorite movie. And it, it makes me so happy that that is the case, that like anything that I will do, I'll like, there's definitely some like, I'm not, not surprised that something might not sell or something like that, but I'm also just like, if it sells, I'm like, I, 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 I saw you, I saw you. I want to like, 
I feel like that's how I want to reach everybody. I want to make sure that like someone's favorite movie, they're like, oh man, no one ever paints my favorite movie or whatever. Like, maybe there'll be a moment that you'll have a little something from your movie. You that's, that's what I love. So, that. Yeah. Anybody else? There's a couple of movies I go to back back to a lot. Yeah. Uh, what was the last movie you went back to not for work? Um, oh, just for just back to just for fun. Well, I will say um, it's not a movie, but. Um, I regularly watch the I Think You Should Leave, that show, <laughs> over and over and over again. I don't like watching, I, I used to watch movies a lot over, but I don't like because there's just so much to do and shows. But that's just the, for Megan and I, that's our comfort thing. And if anyone's never seen it, we're like, we're going to sit down and watch it right now. It's, crazy. <laughs> it's just my favorite thing. It's the one thing that I will watch. I probably watched it like 50 times. Yes. It makes me very happy. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Yeah, Thank you. I've so, never seen yeah. it, so there you go. Dude, buddy, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> come over. Let's do I it. I know all Everybody come over. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, maybe that's the mystery movie. <laughs> Shit, maybe. That was pretty awesome, right? When we talked. Yeah. Yeah, right Thanks, now. man. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, guys. Yeah, uh, and, you. and obviously, the show is up until. Saturday, you can keep checking it out and, and buying the little the few that are left and, uh, and more have, events coming up. Yeah, this Wednesday is the mystery movie. So we'll get together, we'll have pizza and we'll watch it and then I'll reveal what the painting is and the prints. And then uh, Friday is the closing show and we'll do a trivia night and we'll have prizes and stuff for that. And the hunt uh, keep on Instagram. Oh yeah, hunt every day. Uh, depends on what the time zone is. Yeah, thanks everybody. Scott Gibbon. <laughs>